Today's episode is about the this keyword. So let's jump into an indexed HTML page and write some code here. I will start out by writing a function that just logs the this. To prepare us a little bit, I want to mention that this actually refers to the execution context of your function, which means that the binding of this can be different depending on who calls your function. We will see that in a bit. Let me first start the debugger and I also need to open the debug console and of course I need to call a function, otherwise we won't see anything here. So let's call the function log this and then let me restart the code so that we have the latest and greatest version up and running in the browser. And as uh, said, the debug console is important here, which will now lock us to this. To just prove that a little bit better, I will add here like a string, string this, restart, and we see string this here with the window object. That is a very cool discovery that we have made. By default, this refers to window. Window is the browser's window and it gets also assigned all the global variables. So whenever you just create a variable without a namespace, it will be assigned to window and window also holds all the globally available functions such as parseInt. We can now give parseInt an input of type string. So if we put in a string into parseInt, we will get back an integer, a number. The same will happen if we call this dot parsent because this refers to the window namespace. And for the ones who like it very short, we can just call parsent. It's a globally available function and it is the same as calling this dot parsent or window dot parsent. All three have the same output. We will prove that by logging it to the console. Let me just change the function name log this to pass with this to make clear that we use now this dot pass int and then we will give it a string 1337 is a very cool number and then we will lock the outcome of all the three functions. Logging something to the console is as easy as calling console.log. For the reference console is actually referring to the web console so if you open like your debugging console that's what the console namespace refers to so it's different from window. And we need to also use the console log statement for the this pass in method and the just pass in the variant. So let me just quickly type that out here. So we have console log window pass in and console log this dot pass in, and we will do the same for just the pass in. I will also prefix all these logging statements with um, a little word here so that we can then see in our console which code triggered uh, what output here. So let me just put window this in plain to differentiate between all the three function calls here. Et voila, there are our three logging statements, window, this and plain, and they all get us the expected 1337 as a string. The next thing I want to prove is that window is actually bound to this. So I will use the strict equality operator to show that they are the same. We can see that from the boolean return value that signals us that window and this are strictly equal to another. All right, let's go one step further. We currently have a function here that is globally available and I want to make that function now part of an object. Let's create that object. I will simply create a new constant. We'll call it const object and then I will give that object some properties. For example, a name. And I will name my object Sophia and I should also then not name it object anymore because Sophia is not an object. So let's turn this into person. We have now a person named Sophia and Sophia will get the pass with this functionality. To make that available with very little effort, we will just copy over that function to the pass with this property. So we have a pass with this property and it has a function called pass with this. Then we can make the call using person.pass with this 
and supplying an input, I will again use 1337 to then call my method from that person. As we can see now, the execution context has changed because this pass int is not available anymore. The equality check also resulted in a false, which means that this is no longer bound to window. Little spoiler alert, when you call a function from an object, then the execution context of that function is not the window object anymore, but the object that holds the function. Let's prove that with some little investigations. First of all, we will create another function inside of our first function. So I will create a second function where I will just log this. And then we will call that second function from the first function, which requires that I move that second function inside of my first function. And of course, I need to call that second function. Little recap. We have now a call on pass with this, which calls the pass with this function from the person. And that function does some logging and calls the second function. Unfortunately, it crashes because I forgot to comment here the statements that run this pass int, which doesn't exist. So if I comment that out, we can see that this now refers to the person Sophia. And the second function has then a console log, which refers to the window object. This is something that we have to remember now. When we have a function that is part of an object, then this function gets the directly surrounding object as execution context. But every other function, which is not directly part of an object, will have a global object assigned to this. And in a browser environment, that's window. We can actually change that default behavior of this by using a little pragma, which is called use strict. So let's add use strict at the beginning of our code. I have to mention here that it must always be in the beginning to take effect. And when we rerun our code, we will see that this is now undefined if the function is not directly part of an object, which is the case for our second function. It is very important to understand this little difference, which is why I will quickly demo the difference by using the lock this function again, which will just lock the value of this. And then I will simply comment our person pass with this function so that we only see the output of lock this to see how it changes the value of this depending on the strict mode. If the strict mode is turned on, then this defaults to undefined. If it is turned off, then this is the window object. Let's continue with the strict mode as it is nowadays the best practice. The exciting question is now, how can we maintain the context? So how can we make sure that the this context of our person is also the this context of our second function. Historically, a small hack has evolved. We can simply create a new constant, let's say const self, and then in that constant, we can capture the this context. And it will just be copied over to that new variable. This brings us to a situation where this is Sophia, or better said, the object with the name of Sophia. Yeah, remember, we created a const person with name Sophia and passed with this functionality. So that object is being captured in our self variable now. Thanks to that little trick, we can simply use self in our second function. So here we can operate on self.name because we captured that value. Let me add this little second function prefix to rerun the code and prove the assumption. As we can see now, second function can access the name Sophia. And when we lock the self, then we also get to see the object with name Sophia as in the outer function. All right, now I want to show you the call method. 
because using dot call we can also give a different context to a function. So using dot call we can supply an argument in this case self which will then become the this value of the second function. Here's the proof. I will lock now this in the second function and I'm expecting to see the same as before. And yeah, here's the proof. It is now also referring to the object with name Sophia. A modern way to keep the context of the outer function is using an arrow function expression. The setup for it is very easy. We create a new constant called second function and then we assign it to a function using an arrow and that function can be an anonymous function. So now we have a setup of a constant with the function parentheses, the arrow and then the function body. This will allow us now to make use of the this context from the outer function so we will get the this of the pass with this function. Meaning that when we call now the second function and it locks to this, it's the same as of the initial function that is encapsulating it. Let's manifest our newly acquired knowledge by creating a third function. This function will be a simple function declaration and we will lock also the this here inside of that function. And if you followed this tutorial, then you will know that when we call it, the this value will be undefined because that function is not part of an object, so it won't get any context from the object. And since we are in strict mode, the this will default to the value of undefined. Let's verify it by simply deactivating the strict mode. We just need to scroll up to the top of the file and then comment the use strict pragma. And if we then rerun the function, we will see that in the browser, it defaults now to the global object, which is window. And if we enable the strict mode, will have undefined again as the default. We also know how to change that by using a function expression, which can be achieved by using an arrow expression. So if we change that to an arrow function expression, we'll get a this that then gets the this of the second function, which itself gets the this context of the pass with this function, which gets the context of the person object as it is part of that object. Let's rerun the code and then we will see that indeed all three values of this are referencing now the person object with the name Sophia. I also want you to know the difference between a function and a method because in a JavaScript TypeScript environment we call a function that is part of an object a method. So every function that is a property of an object is called a method and this is different from other regular functions. And that's because as we have seen the this value of a method is different from the this value of a function. Let's have a look how we can make use of this in TypeScript code. I will create a function that I will call pass with this and then that function will get an input of type string. And my intention is to convert that string then into a number and to log it to the console. So I need to put the console log statement and I will be reminded that TypeScript doesn't know about console log and I should change the libraries in my compiler options. We'll get there in a moment. First, I want to write the code here with pass int, so window.passInt and then the input and window is also unknown to TypeScript because window comes from the browser, from the document object model and TypeScript tells me here, hey, I don't know about this library or that your code will run in a browser. So we need to update here our libraries in the TypeScript config and we need to add the document object model library, so DOM. And if we write that here and add it to our libraries, then TypeScript will know about console and window. Now that we've sorted out all typing errors, we can start making use of the pass with this function. When calling it, we won't have any more problem because we now have an input and if we supply a string here, everything seems to be all right. So that's the case if we make use of window passInt. But what will happen if we now use this 
pass int. You may think, well, we have a global function, so when calling this pass int, it will default in the strict mode to undefined or in sloppy mode to the global object. But here we can see that TypeScript expects an explicit type annotation. And solve this error by putting a new parameter in front of our existing parameter. And we can say, okay, this is now any. At the same time, we should also feel bad about it because we know that any is not the best type here. So let's check what this actually is. This is a combination of window and the type of the global dis. We'll come to the global dis later. So first, let's reuse the type that we have been shown and annotate it for this so that it is window and the type of global dis. We can see now that we get auto completion, so we can access this dot pass int and give it our input. But we still have problems with our function execution because we can see in line six that there is a problem. Well, let's see if it uh, gets solved by putting this as a second parameter, but uh, it actually also gives us one more error because it will tell us that this must always be the first parameter. So let's put it back. Although we have now declared what we expect for the this value, we need to clarify with which context we call the function. Because depending on the callee, the this context may vary. And we want that this refers to the global this, which is referring to the window object in a browser. So we need to make sure that this value is applied and we can do that by using the call method of a function. Every function has a call method which supports giving the this context as an argument. So I want to define that we use the global object which in a browser is window. So I can set the call method with an argument of this. So I will just call pass with this then with the global this which then refers to the global object and in a browser that is then the window object. An alternative way to define the context of this is using the pass with this function as a method. So when we define an object, then we can declare a property. I will also call it pass with this and we can assign it to a function which makes the function a property of the object. So we have then a method and that method is always called with the context of the object that contains that method. In this case, then that's the object um, itself, so the test object. We see that when we call test pass with this and then supply the 1337, we will get an error because we call pass with this with the wrong context. It now has the context of test, so we need to adjust the signature of our pass with this function and we need to tell here, hey, we now expect a type of test. So let's say type of test, which will be then the test structure and our test object doesn't have a pass int method. So to make now our code compile, we need to make sure that test also has a pass int functionality. So we can just define it real quick. That I will just copy the name pass int, put it here as a property of test and just assign a simple function that doesn't do anything. So I will get here like an input of type string, but I won't do much with it. I will just return here an empty function body. And then we have a pass int method and the type checking is then complete and successful. Finally, I want to show you that I can also use that code in a browser. So let me just open my terminal, then I will enter npx tsc to start the TypeScript compiler, which will then compile that code here into JavaScript. So I can find it here in my dist folder. There is the dist.js file now, which I can then use in my index.html. Here I will create a script tag. I will give it a source attribute, point it to my dist folder, dist.js. Then I can open here the debug functionality in VS Code, hit run and debug, which will start my index file. So I get to see in the debug console what's going on. I see two console log statements 
And if I go to my this TS file to verify, then I will see that the code runs pass with this, which then locks window pass int and window pass int is defined. So it passes the input to the number 1337 here and pass int on the test object doesn't do anything, which is why we return here undefined. So undefined is also locked here from deadline number three, which in compiled JavaScript code is line number four as written here in the debugger. In my next video, we will look at the this keyword in a Node.js application, but I want to give you a little preview and also a great summary of how to understand what is the context of this. So I have three samples here, a function declaration, yeah, just um, a function on the most top level and that gets then here called. I have a method declaration, which is nothing else than a function that is a property of an object. And then I have a method expression, which is also a property of an object. But here in this case, I'm using the fat arrow to change the context of this to the outer context. I have tested all three examples in four different environments. So the first one that I checked out was the browser in the strict mode using the use strict pragma then the sloppy mode, which doesn't use use strict. Then I ran that in Node.js in strict mode and Node.js sloppy mode, which means also like a script that doesn't use the use strict pragma. Let me just walk you through the browser strict mode examples. So we have a function declaration where this is undefined because use strict then makes it undefined. Then a method declaration where this then refers to the object that holds that method in that case, it's the test case object. And then the method expression where we use the outer context. So we use the context that surrounds test case, AKA the global window object. If you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest about TypeScript, then just follow my TypeScript TV channel here on YouTube. If you subscribe, then you will get a notification when I release new content. Currently I'm publishing new videos every Monday.